you know? Some of the textures used for E105 Zeta actually have Dreamcast consoles on them hidden in plain sight. This was likely a later addition during development, as Sonic Adventure wasn't originally a Dreamcast game at all. One of the earliest ideas for the game was a Sonic RPG on the Sega Saturn, but the RPG concept was quickly scrapped. However, the thought of giving the game a stronger emphasis on story, similar to what could be found in an RPG, stuck. Sonic Team decided to stay true to the series' platforming action and rework traditional 2D Sonic mechanics and features into 3D. One example of this is the homing attack, which was introduced to replicate the feeling of easily charging at and bouncing off enemies like in 2D Sonic games. As we mentioned in a previous episode, development of Sonic Adventure jumped to the Dreamcast because the Saturn was becoming a commercial failure. We also mentioned that the game's earlier builds were reworked into the Sonic World segments of Sonic Jam. What wasn't mentioned, however, was just how far into development the Saturn art assets were used. There exists Japanese gameplay footage of Sky Chase Act 2 that uses Sonic and Tails models from the Sega Saturn build. Because of how similar the sequence is to its final iteration, it seems to be running on Dreamcast hardware. Another element we mentioned in a previous video was the possibility of Tikal originally being a playable character, as using a moon jump cheat code can make her jump in the game's cutscenes. Since then, more information has developed showing that both Tikal and Dr. Eggman were partially programmed to be playable and can be selected via hacking. Both characters can only walk around and jump, and they can't interact with enemies and obstacles. In order to research environments for Sonic Adventure, Sonic Team organized a trip to Central and South America. None of the developers had ever seen genuine ruins and jungles before, and tools like the internet were too primitive at the time to find reliable references. The team wanted to make the game world as believable as they possibly could, even going as far as to use their own photographs as textures in the game. Tales of Sand Hill subgame was inspired by people boarding on sand dunes in Ica, Peru. Sonic Team weren't even aware the sport existed and were so impressed that they included it in the final game. Another notable shift in the game's development was the inclusion of the often criticized E-102 Gamma segments. What's interesting is that these levels were included by fan request. Sonic fans appealed to Sega, asking them to incorporate some sort of shooting mechanic into the series. Sega wanted to satisfy their audience, but felt the shooting gun didn't fit Sonic's character. Sonic Team's solution was to create a new armed character, possibly based on Egg Robo from Sonic & Knuckles. Sega also included a different kind of fan service. In the original Japanese release of Sonic Adventure, a mechanical cowgirl billboard could be seen within Casinoopolis, and a moaning sound would play whenever the player touched it. This was replaced with a generic sign in international versions of the game for obvious reasons. This version, however, was also toned down from the Sonic Adventure Auto Demo prototype. In this version, the girl was a fully fleshed out Playboy-style bunny with a minibar. To take advantage of and showcase the Dreamcast power, the team wanted to create a villain that could never have been rendered on previous consoles. In the words of director Takashi Yazuka, I wanted to create an enemy that hadn't been possible until now. I wanted something bigger, something transparent and liquid, because technology now allowed for it. I wanted something that would wow the users. Chaos is seen from the very beginning of the game to make the graphical leap obvious, and was even included in the opening movie sequence. When Chaos was first designed, the concept art was shown to Sonic creator Yuji Naka. Naka liked the drawing so much that he approved them on the spot. The look of perfect chaos was changed in Sonic Generations. It was later explained that this is how chaos was originally intended to appear, but Sonic Team weren't able to achieve that exact look due to the technical restrictions of the Dreamcast. In Sonic Adventure, Sega had to settle for Perfect Chaos's body being made completely out of water, which was still something unthinkable in the days of the Sega Saturn. The direct inspiration for Chaos's concept and presentation is uncertain. In Greek mythology, Chaos was the name of the first deity to come into existence, and is described as vast and formless. Chaos is put forth as a godlike creature in the game, and one of his key features is changing forms. However, Chaos could have another more scientific inspiration. There's a close relative of the amoeba called Chaos. These organisms can change form, are mostly translucent, and have a noticeable opaque blot in them accompanied by smaller mitochondria floating around. This seems very similar to Sonic's Chaos, especially how he was depicted in concept and promotional art. Although his real-life origins are ambiguous, Sega have explained Chaos's virtual beginnings on their Japanese website. Chaos is actually a mutated Chow. The Chow themselves were a progression of a feature from Nights into Dreams called A-Life. A-Life involved artificial lifeforms called Nitopians, which could be merged with other creatures and even bred. The game kept track of the moods of the Nitopians, which would alter the tempo, pitch, and melody of the music depending on the state of the Nitopians within a level. Sega wanted to take this idea of nurturing a creature that grew with the player and migrate it into Sonic Adventure to break up the pace of the game. Not only did they want to mix up the gameplay, but they also wanted people who weren't necessarily good at action sequences to be able to play and enjoy the game. Finding Chow Eggs and raising them also imperceptibly made these players better 
at the game's action sequences and help them progress. Takashi Izuka stated, We really wanted to introduce Sonic to people who weren't good at action games and expand the reach of the game. That's why we included the Chow in the design. We really just wanted to expand the world of Sonic and to expand the game to people who had never had the chance to play a Sonic game before. The Dreamcast version of Sonic Adventure states that Chow Gardens were created in protected environments. However, it's possible to drown in the pools in both the Egg Carrier and Mr. Gruen's Chow Gardens. You can also drown in the Dark and Hero Chow Gardens in Sonic Adventure 2 on the Dreamcast. This can only be done with Tails, though, as he's short and most of his head is submerged. The water was made shallower in Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, making the areas safe again. Sega also changed the Chow Gardens in Sonic Adventure DX for the GameCube. What's confusing about the change, however, is that players can still drown in them even though the problem had been solved in Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, which released the previous year. Did you know? Sonic Adventure 2 had a hidden backstory tucked away in a Japanese strategy guide. This backstory details the events that led to the creation of Shadow the Hedgehog. Maria Robotnik, Dr. Eggman's cousin, suffered from a fictional incurable disease called NIDS, or Neuroimmunodeficiency Syndrome. The name of this disease explicitly references the real-life disease known as AIDS, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. Maria's contraction of NIDS led her grandfather, Professor Gerald Robotnik, to begin research on immortality. His research eventually led to the creation of the so-called ultimate life form, Shadow the Hedgehog. This backstory was never referenced in-game, perhaps due to the controversial nature of the subject matter. Despite this, the story was incorporated into the Archie comic storyline with both Maria Robotnik and Bonds Rabot contracting NIDS. One of the main events in Sonic Adventure 2 sees Dr. Eggman destroy a large portion of the moon to demonstrate the Eclipse Cannon's power. In later Sonic games, however, the moon appears to be completely intact. At the 2013 Sonic Boom event, the game's director Takashi Izuka was asked about this inconsistency. Izuka said the moon had simply rotated, so subsequent games show the unbroken side of it. In real life, though, this would be impossible, as the moon always faces the Earth from the same side. In a process called synchronous rotation, the moon spins on its axis at the same rate that it orbits the Earth, so the moon appears to be almost completely still. Izuka was most likely just put on the spot by this question and gave a simple answer. Sonic Adventure 2's cutscene are infamous for their numerous audio issues. The lip syncing doesn't match the voices, and the characters will often talk over each other. You're not even good enough to be I'll my make you eat those words. This is because the cutscenes are animated to fit the Japanese dub, and when the game was localized, the Japanese speech was simply swapped out for the English dub. Because many of the lines were longer in English, characters are often cut off before they finish talking. <laughs> I don't know what this space colony is all about, but I'll find and destroy that kid, and then kick their imperial butt. All right. But while the cutscenes were animated for the Japanese dub, Sonic Adventure 2 was, in fact, developed in America. After the Japanese version of Sonic Adventure was completed, Sonic Team split into two halves. One half remained in Japan to work on games such as Fantasy Star Online, and the other half relocated to San Francisco to begin localizing Sonic Adventure for the West. The new division was known as Sonic Team USA. Once Sonic Adventure was localized, work began on the sequel. Inspired by their new surroundings, the team wanted Sonic Adventure 2 to have more of an American flavor. During an interview with IGN, Takashi Izuka explained the reason behind this new direction. Since Sonic Team USA is residing around San Francisco and the Bay Area, we see a lot of beautiful images here in San Francisco every day, and we wanted to apply those elements in the game. Of course, the world of Sonic Adventure 2 is a fictional world, so our intention is not to create a simulation of San Francisco, but we're really inspired by what we see in the city. It's easy to spot many of these inspirations when playing the game. City Escape is based on the city of San Francisco itself, and the bridge seen in Radical Highway is based off the famous Golden Gate Bridge. Additionally, the game's two driving levels, Route 101 and Route 280, are named after real highways in California. While they were working on the game, members of the development team would occasionally receive parking tickets costing around $30 each. The tickets were passed out by parking attendants who drove small cars with only three wheels. As a form of revenge, the team included these vehicles in Tails' mission street level and allowed the player to destroy them. This was all done in good fun, though the team did acknowledge that the traffic wardens were just doing their jobs. 
One of Sonic's new abilities introduced in Sonic Adventure 2 is grinding on rails. The final version of the game includes many advertisements for soap shoes as part of a deal. The shoes have concave soles that allow the wearer to grind along rails, and Sonic wears these shoes in the game. The sponsorship deal appears to have been secured very late in development, as early screenshots of the game show Sonic in his more traditional footwear. Sonic's original shoes can also be seen during certain frames of his bouncing animation in the final game. Furthermore, in the Dreamcast version of the game, Sonic can be seen wearing his original shoes for part of the intro cinematic. This error was corrected in future ports of the game. According to Izuka, Shadow the Hedgehog was originally intended to have remained dead following the events of Sonic Adventure 2. In a Q&A at Summer of Sonic 2011, he stated, As you know in the story, Shadow was only meant to appear in that single title, but because of the reaction of the fans, we decided to bring him back in Sonic Heroes, and eventually you saw him in his own title. It's also possible that Amy Rose was intended to be a playable character outside of multiplayer. In the Dreamcast version's game data, text can be found in the game's code that tells the player how much the Chow likes Amy suggesting that she may have originally been playable. It also seems that Super Sonic and Super Shadow were intended to be playable in multiplayer. Text can be found, some of which reads, Congratulations, you've cleared Green Hill with rank A. Strongest characters are now available to use in Sonic and Shadow 2 player versus mode. It seems that the player would need to clear Green Hill with an A rank in order to unlock the characters. A difficult task as unlocking Green Hill requires the player to collect all 180 emblems. Speaking of multiplayer, the game was originally going to have more online capabilities. Unused files in the game's code explicitly refer to a world ranking system, with text having been finalized for these menus. Several events in Sonic Adventure 2 also seem to be lifted straight from the 1999 PlayStation game, Pepsi Man. One level has Pepsi Man skating downhill through San Francisco, and a later level has him running from an 18-wheeler. Both scenarios were used in Sonic Adventure 2's City Escape level over two years after Pepsi Man's release. Did you know? Sonic Heroes holds the Guinness World Record for the most playable characters in a platform game, with 12 characters total. This is thanks to the game's team-based gameplay, which has three characters being controlled at once. The focus on team-based play was partly a response to the Sonic Adventure titles and their various gameplay styles. The game's director Takashi Izuka felt that having Adventure 1 and 2's gameplay change drastically between characters limited their audience to hardcore gamers. The title Sonic Heroes was chosen to distance Heroes from the Sonic Adventure games. If Heroes was titled Sonic Adventure 3 instead, gamers who didn't play the first two adventures might have been discouraged from buying it. Heroes was also streamlined to the point of excluding fan-favorite features such as the Chow Garden. These side quests were removed so that nothing distracted from the main game and hurt its pacing. The bosses in Heroes were specifically designed to flee from players. This was done to keep the gameplay between the main stages and the boss battles consistent. In past Sonic games, the player would run at high speeds until encountering a boss, where the game would come to a halt. Accommodating new players was a large concern for the team, as Heroes was the series' first true multi-platform game. Sonic Team licensed the Renderware engine to make porting heroes to the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox easier. The team also hoped that using the same engine would make the various ports comparable. Despite this, the PS2 version of Heroes was notably lower in quality than its counterparts. The PS2's weaker performance meant that Heroes suffered from a worse frame rate, as well as aliasing. Izuka believed they could have made the game run better if it was built from the ground up to run on the PS2. The designers' focus on accessibility affected the game's visuals and story as well. Critics noted that level themes in Heroes were more creative than either of the adventure games. In an interview with Electronic Gaming Monthly, Izuka explained that previous 3D Sonic games were constrained by story requirements, as levels had to fit a coherent narrative. Heroes lacked an involved story, so its levels were free of requirements and could be more imaginative. Izuka apparently wanted to make a 3D pinball stage like Casino Park as early as Sonic Adventure, but couldn't find a way to make it fit the game's world. Sonic Heroes saw the return of the Chaotix crew, a team that had made their only appearance in the Sega 32X game, Knuckles Chaotix. It too featured team-based gameplay, with two characters being tethered to one another at all times. As the characters perfectly fitted the Sonic Heroes' team-based gameplay, Sonic Team decided to reuse them. However, the current incarnation of the team is very different from their debut. Originally, the group wasn't a detective agency, SBO wasn't a ninja, and Charmy the Bee was described as being surprisingly sophisticated. This change can be attributed to Sonic Team never having anything to do with the Chaotix's original portrayals, as Knuckles' Chaotix was developed by a different internal team at Sega. In Izuka's mind, Sonic Team weren't just reviving past characters, but essentially making new characters using old designs. Interestingly, Charmy's revised personality resembles his portrayal in the UK tie-in comic, Sonic the Comic, which was made almost nine years earlier. The comic's version 
version of Charmy had a tendency to annoy his teammates with bizarre mannerisms and a hyperactive personality. This is similar to his appearance in Heroes, where he is described as a scatterbrained funny kid. Cream the Rabbit had a complicated entrance to the series. Cream was planned to debut in Heroes, but made her playable premiere in Sonic Advance 2, over a year before the release of Heroes. She was added in order to make Sonic Advance 2 more distinct from the first Sonic Advance game. This also let Sega introduce Cream before she appeared in the first episode of the anime, Sonic X. Tails' voice actor, William Corkery, was only 10 years old when Heroes was released, making him the youngest actor ever to play a character in the Sonic series. His sister Emily also lent her voice to the game at only 14 years old, playing Charmy B. Their father, Bill Corkery, was also the voice of Espio the Chameleon. While Team Chaotix's Team Blast may sound unintelligible, each player is actually singing their own distinct lines. The vocals either cut each other off or get drowned out by sound effects. Their Team Blast's presentation may also be a nod from an unused idea from Sonic 1, where Sonic and Vector played in a band for the game's sound test. An early version of Sonic Heroes' Attract Mode video can be found in Sonic Mega Collection Plus. The cinematic is a work in progress, with the visuals switching between finished and incomplete animation. It also features an unfinished version of the game's titular song. This version has no lyrics written, with singer Johnny Joelli instead scatting the tune. Unused files also hint at several changes during Heroes' production. In the retail version of Heroes, Team Rose and Team Chaotix only play through small segments of full levels. But it seems this wasn't always the case. Dialogue also exists for Mystic Mansion that alludes to a room full of doors and switches. However, no such room exists in Heroes. In the final game, using Team Blast during battles will revive fallen teammates. But unused audio suggests that at some point, the Team Blast could only be used if all three characters were still active. Unused lines also hint that the Metal Madness fight was planned to be very different. The boss would have wielded additional powers, such as the ability to turn invisible. There's also a mistranslated line in Sonic Team's version of Final Fortress. After pressing the self-destruct button in the first area of the game, Tails will ask, wonder why it's self-destructed? The line doesn't make much sense, as Tails advises the player to hit the self-destruct switch beforehand. In the Japanese script, Tails instead asks why Dr. Eggman would make the self-destruct switch so easily accessible, a joke at the expense of the level design. In Super Hard Mode, Knuckles asks Tails if he can handle the stormy weather, and Tails admits that he's a little afraid of it. This is potentially a reference to the 1993 Sonic the Hedgehog OVA, in which Tails was astrophobic. One of the most unusual details of the game lies within its instruction manual. According to the booklet, Dr. Robotnik is both a romanticist and a feminist. Another secret can be found while playing as Team Dark. If the player is currently controlling a character other than Rouge, and looks at her in first-person view, she will turn to them and wink. Did you know? While Shadow the Hedgehog was in development, Sega considered other spin-off titles based on Tails, Knuckles, and Dr. Eggman. The first rumors of a Sonic the Hedgehog spin-off arose in early 2005. Sega hosted an online poll asking which Sonic characters fans would like to see star in their own game. The four choices were Tails, Knuckles, Shadow, or Dr. Eggman. The poll also asked voters to pick their preferred subtitles for each of these characters' hypothetical games. Shadow's choices included Renegade Hedgehog, Rebel with a Cause, Chaos Unleashed, and Sonic's Nemesis. While the poll appeared before Shadow the Hedgehog was announced, it's unlikely that it had much of an impact on the game's direction. This is due to how close the poll was conducted before the game's reveal. Fans did impact the game in a significant way, however. A promotional event was held in Japan where Shadow performed as a wrestling announcer and awarded the winning wrestler a pack of 10 Sega games. Sonic creator Yuji Naka also attended the event and commented on some of the game's influences. Naka said, We received letters from kids, and many of them had asked for Sonic Sonic to have a gun. We felt that it wasn't appropriate for Sonic to have a gun, but maybe it'd be okay with Shadow, and that's how we started on the game. Naka was also optimistic about Shadow's franchise potential. In an interview with GameSpy, he stated, We've had ideas of doing a spin-off series, so perhaps that's what Shadow will lead to. Shadow the Hedgehog was heavily influenced by the proliferation of first- and third-person shooters in the Western market. While the Japanese Sonic team was developing a more traditional Sonic title, Sega Studio USA was tasked with developing a game that would have a greater directional impact on the series. Shadow was chosen as the star of this new venture due to his popularity, being second only to Sonic. 
Another factor taken into consideration was Shadow's moral ambiguity. Shadow is neither definitively good nor evil, so by casting him as the main character, the team hoped players would form their own impression of him. The game's director, Takashi Izuka, felt that the change in protagonist afforded the team an opportunity to introduce new elements that would feel out of place for Sonic. One such element was the inclusion of curse words such as damn. Contrary to popular belief, Shadow the Hedgehog is not the first Sonic game to include a curse word. That honor goes to Sonic Adventure 2, in which Knuckles' theme, Unknown From Me, contains the word damn. Although Shadow the Hedgehog is infamous for its swearing and violence, it was originally meant to be more graphic. The goal was to earn a teen rating from the ESRB, but coincidentally, the E10 Plus rating was introduced during the game's development. The team decided to aim for this new rating instead, resulting in some of the game's content being toned down. These revisions included changing the Black Arm's blood from red to green, editing scenes of gun soldiers' deaths out of the opening, cutting away from Maria's death before her limp body is shown, and censoring dialogue. There are even files in Shadow the Hedgehog's data that suggest Sonic was planned to be in the game's multiplayer mode. It appears that he was cut early in development, as all that exists are Junichi Kanemaru's voice lines for the Japanese dub. Sonic was most likely removed so that Sega's mascot wasn't seen handling firearms. Arms. Although the game was toned down in many ways, it still included a few troubling scenes when it released. One example has Shadow attempting to assassinate the president, and another scene has him detonate a bomb that destroys Central City. The timing of the game's release was poor, as the attempted assassination of President George W. Bush and the London 7-7 bombings happened earlier in the same year. Shadow the Hedgehog was the first game in the Sonic series to feature the voice cast from the television series Sonic X. Fans speculated that the cast was replaced due to the death of Dr. Eggman's original voice actor, Dean Bristow, in January 2005. This turned out to be incorrect. The current voice of Dr. Eggman, Mike Pollock, debunked this theory in an interview with Sonic Scene, confirming that the decision to replace the cast was made prior to Bristow's death. The Shadow who stars in Shadow the Hedgehog is the same character that appeared in Sonic Adventure 2. It's likely that many players miss this information, which is the resolution to a cliffhanger introduced in Sonic Heroes. The end of Team Dark's story in Sonic Heroes heavily implies that the Shadow in that game is a robot replica of the original created by Dr. Eggman. Shadow the Hedgehog further adds to the confusion, with many of the game's branching storylines presenting a completely different history for the character. However, if the fight against the game's final boss lasts for eight minutes, Dr. Eggman will contact Shadow and confirm that he is, indeed, the original that appeared back in Sonic Adventure 2. According to him, Eggman rescued Shadow from his fall using a robot and went on to use him as the basis for his Shadow androids. Shadow the Hedgehog innovated the Sonic franchise by allowing players to drive vehicles and wield firearms. These features were met with uncertainty, with many fans considering them to be out of place in a Sonic game. Despite the controversy, Izuka defended their inclusion, saying, Shadow the Hedgehog is a unique, original character, separate from Sonic the Hedgehog. The reason I created Shadow the Hedgehog as a main character for this game is so I can give Shadow different abilities that Sonic wasn't able to do, and that includes using weapons or using vehicles and whatnot. To mirror the game's more mature tone, the team took inspiration from movies aimed at an older audience, including Underworld, Constantine, and Terminator. As well as inspirations, the game has many nods and references to pop culture. Upon completing the dark mission of the level The Ark, the cutscene that plays shows the Eclipse Cannon destroying the White House in a reference to the 1996 movie Independence Day. Two of the game's bosses, Blue Falcon and Black Bull, share their names with vehicles from Nintendo's F-Zero series. They belong to protagonist Captain Falcon and antagonist Black Shadow, respectively. After completing the hero mission of Westopolis, Sonic exclaims, Welcome to the next level. This was a slogan used in Sega advertisements throughout the 90s. Gun soldiers will sometimes mention the former head of Sonic Team, saying, Mr. Yuji Naka is alright! The egg vacuum weapon is a reference to another Sega franchise, Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. The game's antagonist, Black Doom, also seems to be a reference to another Sonic Team property. He bears an uncanny resemblance to Wise Man the Wicked, the antagonist of Knights into Dreams. Both characters take the form of a seemingly legless cloak with similar similar shoulder pads, neckwear, pendants, and nine prominent horns on their heads. 
Both characters also have detachable eyes and were the creators of their respective game's protagonists. Did you know? Several mistakes in the Sonic franchise can be found before even booting up a game. The North American Wii version of Sonic Colors includes a spelling mistake on the back of the game box, with the word PERFORM misspelled in the line AND PREFORM new moves. Additionally, the game's instruction manual accidentally misspells NEGAWISP as MEGAWISP. The back of Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection's case also has a mistake. The box shows four games, with the screenshot on the top left supposedly being from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. However, it's actually an image of the Flamecraft fight during Angel Island Zone Act 1 from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. 2006's Sonic the Hedgehog instruction manual has a number of mistakes as well. It erroneously states the game includes a shield power-up that functions identically to other games in the series. However, this power-up is not in the final game. The manual states that Tails and Omega have a flight gauge that will lower as they fly or hover. It also states that using Sonic's gem powers will cause the action gauge to deplete, but this is untrue. Another mistake appears in the cutscene where Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles return to the past. Sonic picks up a newspaper called the Daily Soriana, referring to the town of Soleana. This is presumably because of the lack of distinction between R and L sounds in Japanese. A similar error can be found in Sonic Rush, where Blaze's voice actress Bella Hudson is credited as Bera Hudson. Another typo caused Sega some embarrassment in 2015. During the Halloween special stage event for Sonic Runners, the developers issued an apology to players over the character Boo, who they had incorrectly referred to as Boob. Even the first Sonic the Hedgehog game has a handful of mistakes. The Japanese version of the original Sonic released later than the Western version, and had several fixes to improve the game. The Japanese version, known as Rev-01, has more layers of parallax scrolling in most levels, adding a greater sense of depth. Rev-01 also corrects several known errors. For example, the revision fixed an error in the zone order on the stage select screen. In the original version, the zone ordering creates a smooth transition from natural landscapes to urban backgrounds as the levels progress. As such, Labyrinth Zone appears after Green Hill Zone as the second area. However, Labyrinth Zone isn't actually playable until Zone 4, possibly because it was too difficult to be the second level of the game. In the updated Japanese version, the stage select screen moves Labyrinth Zone to its correct position. Despite these corrections, there's still a known error in the game. Moving very quickly can result in the screen not scrolling fast enough to keep up. In Green Hill Zone Act 1, the player can move so quickly the screen doesn't scroll down fast enough, resulting in a death by hitting the kill plane at the bottom of the screen. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 also contains a mistake with its stage select. The game features seamless level transitions, such as when going from Marble Garden Zone to Carnival Night Zone, where the sky slowly darkens. But when transitioning from Carnival Night Zone to Ice Cap Zone, the scene suddenly switches from night to day. This is because originally the Flying Battery Zone from Sonic & Knuckles was supposed to go in between Carnival Night Zone and Ice Cap Zone to account for the change. As stated in the Sonic Jam official guidebook, at the end of Flying Battery Zone, Sonic would have knocked out a door, which would then be used as a snowboard at the beginning of Ice Cap Zone Act 1. Due to time constraints, Flying Battery Zone was cut from Sonic 3 and was instead featured in Sonic & Knuckles. As a remnant of this, Flying Battery Zone can still be found in Sonic 3's stage select. In Sonic 3 and Knuckles, completing a level with a time of 9 minutes and 59 seconds, a second off receiving a time over, will grant the player a time bonus of 100,000 points. It's unclear whether this was a mistake or an easter egg to reward the player for cutting it so close. Regardless, the feature was carried over into Sonic Mania. While Robotnik is supposed to be invincible during cutscenes, it's possible to kill him if the player manages to hit him 256 times. This will cause the hit counter to reduce down to zero where he'll be destroyed. This is most easily done with Tails. In the West, Dr. Eggman was known as Dr. Robotnik until the release of Sonic Adventure in 1999. However, some references to the name Eggman managed to slip through the cracks. Many of the names of Robotnik's machines are egg-themed, like Egg Robo, Deaf Egg, and the Eggmobile. The name Eggman 01 can be seen emblazoned on the side of Wing Fortress Zone in Sonic 2. Interestingly, the opposite has also happened in Japan. The Sonic Triple Trouble level Robotnik Winter keeps its name in Japan, even though Eggman was never called Robotnik in the East. Robotnik caused even more confusion with his appearance on the cover of Sonic 2. In the West, the cover showed Robotnik looming in the background. 
However, instead of sporting his blue spectacles, he instead has a full beard, no glasses, and hollow black eyes. These black eyes were mistakenly based on his appearance in-game. Presumably due to palette limitations, Robotnik's specs appear black rather than blue. His eyes seem to have been misinterpreted by an artist as black voids rather than glasses due to the sprites. This appearance may have influenced the character's design in other Western tie-in media, such as Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog Sat AM, both of which feature Robotnik with black and red eyes. Another localization flub can be found in the manual of Sonic CD regarding the character Amy Rose. The Japanese manual calls her Rosie the Rascal, a nickname that makes appearances throughout the series. The American version mistakenly refers to her as Princess Sally, possibly to tie the game to the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon. Translation is tricky, with slightly altered lines often giving a scene a different tone or intent to the original. The Sonic series is no stranger to this. Sonic Forces contained some English localization that gained notoriety among the fanbase. Among those lines was a section where Silver states Tails has lost it. In Japanese, the intent is a bit different, with Silver simply saying Tails had gone missing, as in being lost. In Sonic Adventure 2, when seeing the Bio-Lizard teleport, Shadow asks, is that what Chaos Control is? The line is slightly awkward and implies that the Bio-Lizard is using a more advanced or perfected version of the technique. However, this was mistranslated slightly from the original, where Shadow simply states, that was Chaos Control. It's stated multiple times in the franchise that Knuckles is an echidna. However, in Knuckles' theme song for the original Sonic Adventure, unknown from M.E., he erroneously refers to himself as a porcupine, another spiny mammal. This may have been a decision made to better fit the rhythm of the verse. Another mistake can be found in Sonic's story. After reuniting with Sonic and Tails' story at Red Mountain, Sonic jumps up to board the Tornado 2. In Sonic's story, however, he stands in place, then suddenly appears on the plane afterwards. This is because Sonic never transitions from one animation to another, leaving him standing in place. When a few issues with the scene are amended, Sonic will board the plane with a jump, like in Tails' story. The game also has a persistent camera glitch, where the camera is placed behind the character instead of in its intended position. When appearing at the altar of the Emeralds, the transition from the previous scene prevents the proper camera from being used. Some hackers have managed to correct the camera, revealing the intended angle for several scenes. This bug appeared in the DX GameCube version, but was fixed in later ports of the game. In the PC version of Sonic Heroes, some voice lines that were supposed to be heard won't load at all most notably Team Cream's A-Rank line. In fact, many voice files were left empty in the PC version for unknown reasons. However, subtitles for some of these lines still appear. Another voiceover mistake comes when defeating the robot carnival boss. Dr. Eggman will say the line, Don't get so excited, boys, even while addressing the teams with female members, Team Dark and Team Rose. In the NSTCU PlayStation 2 version of Heroes, the localization team neglected to switch the functions of X and Circle. In Japan, circle means accept or correct, while X means wrong or back. This isn't the same in English, and so usually the two buttons' functions are swapped. The change was corrected in PAL versions of Heroes. Some mistakes in Sonic games weren't entirely the fault of Sega. To promote Sonic and the Black Knight, Sega held a fan art contest. Winning entrants would get a free copy of the game and have their artwork displayed in the game's special gallery mode. Unfortunately, one of the winners was found to have traced his image from another fan artist, Mega777. The winner was quickly disqualified, and he posted a full apology on the Sonic Italia message boards, claiming he thought Sega would have checked for any evidence of wrongdoing. While Sega attempted to get in touch with Mega777, offering to send her the game and some swag as an apology, they also stated they would not be updating the game to correct the mistake. Thus, the wrong person remains credited in Sonic and the Black Knight to this day. Did you know? The Sonic franchise's Chaos Emeralds aren't actually emeralds. Precious gems are categorized into emeralds, rubies, diamonds, etc. based mainly on the gem's color and how they are cut. And since the Chaos Emeralds are all different colors, it can be assumed that Chaos Emeralds get their names from the way they are cut. However, these gems don't use the emerald cut classification. In most Sonic games, the Chaos Emeralds either use a brilliant or single cut, which are usually reserved for diamonds. This means that they should actually be called the Chaos Diamonds. The Sonic franchise has a long history of secrets, starting with some of their earliest games. Shortly after the US debut of Sonic Spinball, a second version of the game was released. This version removed two tracks from the original game's soundtrack, which were remixed and taken directly from the original Sonic the Hedgehog game. 
Their removal was due to Sega not actually owning the copyright to several tracks in the original Sonic, and likely forgetting to license the music for Sonic Spinball. These tracks were composed by Dreams Come True, a Japanese band who even made the original Green Hill Zone theme. Interestingly, Sonic's first public appearance is linked to the band, and was revealed on the side of the band's tour bus on November 7, 1990. Another early fact has to do with Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which is a modified version of the Japanese exclusive Poyo Poyo released on the Genesis. While the initial training levels from Poyo Poyo were removed after being converted into a Sonic game, the levels are still within the game's data. By modifying this data, it's possible to reinsert the levels, though with a number of errors such as glitched text, character misplacement, and no music at all. A bizarre result of this conversion is that it wouldn't be the only time Poyo Poyo was rebranded into another series. HAL Laboratory and Compile released their own modified version of Poyo Poyo, Kirby's Avalanche, which released a year and a half later. This meant that two first-party franchises, Sega's Sonic the Hedgehog and Nintendo's Kirby, contained virtually identical assets. While the arcade Sonic title, Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, was released internationally in 1993, the game was never actually translated for countries outside of Japan. However, within the game's data are unused sprites of Dr. Robotnik, that imply an English localization was worked on. These sprites would have seen Robotnik's design change to that of the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon appearance, which might have been more familiar to American fans at the time. Another interesting secret from early Sonic games can be found in Sonic CD. The game's first boss fight is against the EGG HVC001. The latter half of the boss's name, HVC001, is the model number of the Nintendo Famicom. This could have actually been a joke at Nintendo's expense, as the EGG HVC001 is also the first and easiest boss in the game. These types of secrets can also be found in the franchise's newer games, including the recent Sonic Mania. In versions of Mania prior to patch version 1.03.0919, there's an easter egg based on the popular YouTube personality Video Game Donkey. The easter egg is activated by latching to a chain in Hydro City Zone Act 1, and inputting the Sonic 3 and Knuckles level select code, left 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 right 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 up up up, once active, when the player passes through a speed booster, instead of the usual sound effect, a voice clip of Donkey will play instead. <laughs> Sonic Colors also has a few secrets. In one of Eggman's PA announcements in the Asteroid Coaster area, he will say, Would the owner of a yellow car, license plate 1NOM155, please report to the main gate. Your vehicle is in the path of an asteroid, and it's about to get smashed. Oh, um, never mind. This is a reference to Axel and his taxi from Crazy Taxi, which has the license plate 1NOM155. Another secret can be found towards the end of Sonic Colors. During the game's final cutscene, the camera will give a brief glimpse at Tails' computer. On the screen are three sets of hexadecimal numbers. Whilst Tails translates the first two sets, the third goes untranslated. When interpreted as Shift JIS encoded text, this translates to English as, if you can read this, you're a geek. Yet another nod can be found in the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 versions of Sonic Unleashed's daytime Spagonia stage, Rooftop Run. In the stage, a pedestrian can be found reading a newspaper. Taking a closer look at the paper, it's possible to see a low-quality black and white image of 2006's Sonic the Hedgehog's box art on the top right of the page. During development of Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood, Sega of Europe held a contest which let fans name one of the game's groups of enemies. The contest was titled Sonic Chronicles – A Race to Name, and was won by Sega fan site Sega Nerds. The site found victory with their suggestion to call the enemies the Zoa, a reference to the town of the same name from Panzer Dragoon Saga. Sonic Chronicles also contained some unused dialogue within its data, though who would have spoken this line is unknown. The unused text reads, Ha 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 ha! Holy crap! I'm a disembodied voice! Unused data can also be found in Knuckles Chaotix. The data contains a sprite of a bloody skull with Japanese text reading Tobu, meaning to fly or to jump. 
there is no evidence to explain what this graphics purpose was, and it may simply be a joke by the game's developers. Knuckles Chaotix also has six collectible rings called the Chaos Rings, which originally had a different name. They were initially called the Holy Rings. It seems likely that the rings were renamed in order to avoid any religious controversy. This was one of the earliest instances of censorship in the Sonic franchise, but many more would occur throughout the years. One early example of self-censoring happened during development of Sonic 3. According to the game's tester, Jay Pataki, the Get Blue Spheres message at the start of the special stages originally said, Get Blue Balls. The text was changed after the mostly male staff believed that the original message had sexual undertones. Another Sonic game was completely reworked due to censorship. Sonic the Hedgehog's Game World on the Sega Pico was an educational game containing a total of 17 minigames. During the game's localization in the West, six of these games were removed entirely, and a number of the other games were censored. All references to gambling were removed, as well as games based on rock, paper, scissors and fortune telling. The background of the card matching memory game was also cut, as it was casino themed. A pre-release demo for Sonic Adventure, known as the Auto Demo, was made to showcase adventure with CPU gameplay, similar to the Attract mode in arcade games. However, players were able to modify the demo to be playable, and discovered several differences between the demo and the final release. One difference is that, in the demo, Amy's dress folds up to reveal her underwear when falling through the air after a jump. In the game's final release, this was adjusted to keep Amy's skirt at a more modest angle. Another change can be seen in the early prototype demo of Sonic Adventure 2, known as Sonic Adventure 2 The Trial, which was bundled with Fantasy Star Online for the Dreamcast. The game's first cutscene has a helicopter pilot ask, what the hell? While in the final release, he simply exclaims, what? In a draft of the Sonic 06 script, it states that Blaze is bothered by her under-endowed chest, comments on which will rouse her anger. This was a character concept which was ultimately never implemented in the game, possibly to avoid negative repercussions. Did you know that Dr. Eggman, also known as Dr. Ivo Robotnik, was originally designed to be a hero, not a villain? At the start of the 16-bit era, Sega desperately wanted to dominate the console market and beat Nintendo. They thought the best strategy to reach this goal would be creating a franchise that could outshine the Super Mario Brothers. Sega organized an internal competition for a new mascot to be the face of the franchise, and the design of Sonic the Hedgehog ultimately won out. But Sonic was only one of many designs put forward. One design was of a chubby egg-shaped man with a huge mustache wearing pajamas. The team at Sega loved the character and didn't want to simply throw it away. His design was reworked to look more like an antagonist and became the doctor we all know today. It's also been said that Eggman's design was based on President Theodore Roosevelt, and looking at the glasses, mouth, and mustache, it's easy to see why. Eggman's mustache is probably his most defining feature, but did you know that according to an unused audio file of Omochao within Sonic Adventure 2's game data, his mustache is fake? Did you know the doctor's mustache is fake? Sonic was originally intended to have a human love interest named Madonna. She was a blonde-haired, thin woman in a clingy red dress and was actually going to be Sonic's girlfriend. She was meant to chase Sonic around, similar to how Amy Rose did in later games. Madonna could have also been an attempt at replicating some aspects of the Super Mario Bros. franchise, as Mario also had a love interest in Princess Toadstool. Madonna was scrapped during the development of the game by Sega of America employee Madeline Schroeder. She wanted to soften the game for children in other countries, believing the human love interest to be too Japanese. A similar concept was implemented in 2006 Sonic the Hedgehog. At the title screen of Sonic CD, entering down 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 left right A will take you to the game's sound test. Putting certain codes into the sound test can take you to several hidden screens in the game. One screen is of Tails saying, see you next game, and another is an image of Sonic with big grey eyes and Japanese text saying, you are cool. More interesting, however, are the other screens you can bring up. A bizarre tribute to Batman, a DJ scene with Eggman, Metal Sonic and Sonic, and finally, a screen full of disturbing looking Sonics with some Japanese texts that reads, Fun is infinite with Sega Enterprises, Majin. Majin can be interpreted as demon or devil. This screen would also be displayed when attempting to play early pirated copies of the game. Sonic CD has another interesting quirk. Waiting for three minutes without touching the controller will cause Sonic to say, I'm out of here, then jump off screen, giving the player a game over. Something similar was implemented in Knuckles Chaotix. If the player stands perfectly still for 60 seconds, Metal Sonic will appear out of nowhere and attack. 
In the Jet Set Radio franchise, there's a recurring character called Garum, and in the first game, he can be seen wearing a necklace with some kind of artifact on it. In an interview with Games TM, Jet Set Radio's art director, Ryuto Ueda, gave some insight as to what the object was. He stated that it's the skull of another famous Sega character. Looking closer at the necklace, this skull is blue and has spikes rolling down the back of it. The artifact is actually the skull of Sonic the Hedgehog. Did you know? Sonic's trademark speed was actually inspired by the original Super Mario Bros. In issue 260 of Nintendo Power, Sonic's co-creator Yuji Naka revealed the initial concept for Sonic the Hedgehog's fast gameplay came from playing level 1-1 of Super Mario Bros. over and over again as fast as he could, since you always had to play the level first regardless of whether you used warp zones or not. Naka said, I always tried to get through the level as fast as I could, and that inspired the initial concept for Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic's design itself had different inspirations. Sonic's shoes were inspired by Michael Jackson's boots and the color scheme of Santa Claus. Sonic's personality was, interestingly, inspired by the 42nd President of the United States, Bill Clinton. Michael Jackson has other connections to the Sonic franchise. According to Sega Technical Institute director Roger Hector, Jackson was initially brought in during the development of Sonic 3 to compose some music, even though his involvement was never mentioned in any of the game's credits. Jackson's removal was supposedly due to the child abuse allegations against him that arose at that time, and his removal led to the music being reworked. In December 2009, Jackson's composer Bradley Buxer, who is credited in Sonic 3 as Brad Buxer, told French magazine Black and White that Jackson was involved with some of Sonic 3's compositions, and was supposedly not credited because he wasn't happy with how the Genesis' lacking sound chip handled the music. More Sonic games have interesting stories surrounding their soundtracks. Hideki Naganuma, who composed most of the music for Sonic Rush, usually sampled audio from many other mediums when making his music. For Sonic Rush, Naganuma sampled audio from at least 14 other creations. An obvious sample is in the track Back to Back, which uses the main melody from Louie Louie. Others are harder to spot, such as the track Wrapped in Black, which bizarrely uses audio sampled from a speech by human rights activist Malcolm X. Sonic's popularity reached farther than most video game icons. In 1993, Sonic the Hedgehog was chosen to be the first video game character in the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade. Unfortunately, the balloon popped on its one and only flight by being pushed into a lamppost by strong gusts of wind, hurting a child and a police officer on its descent. Because of this, the balloon was retired. A differently designed Sonic came back in 2011 and has been there since. Sonic also won the award of the longest running video game comic in 2008. Archie Comics made over 200 issues, including specials. Sonic's comics started in 1993 and is still going today. Sonic has even influenced the naming of scientific discoveries. There's a gene called Sonic Hedgehog, named after Sonic himself. The gene also has an inhibitor, something that can stop the process of a gene, named Robotnikonin, named after Sonic's nemesis, Dr. Ivo Eggman Robotnik. A lot of the content in Sonic games has also been reworked, and sometimes cut entirely. In the original Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic was going to wear goggles. The goggles can still be found in the game's ROM. It was originally thought they were an item that helped Sonic breathe underwater, but one of the game's developers, Dean Sitton, stated the goggles were simply a cosmetic change and appeared whenever Sonic was underwater. There's also a cut enemy in the game's data, named Splats. Splats has no programming attached to it. Interestingly, Splats appeared several times in promotions during Sonic's development. It was featured in a set of promotional trading cards for the game, on the box of a collection of Japanese Sonic figures, and was even featured in Sonic the Comic and Archie Comics' Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic 2 has several cut areas. The most well-known cut area is Hidden Palace Zone. Hidden Palace Zone was never completed, but most of the first act is playable in two of the game's known prototype builds. It was one of the first zones created, but wasn't updated much after the initial phase of development. Yuji Naka revealed the zone was originally going to be a place where the player would warp to after collecting all seven Chaos Emeralds. The player would then be able to transform into Super Sonic, but the idea was ultimately scrapped and the ability to transform into Super Sonic was given to the player from the get-go. The zone is accessible in the final version of Sonic 2 by using a Game Genie code, but almost all of the artwork is missing and the zone is essentially unplayable. The zone also had three enemies that were ultimately unused, two dinosaurs resembling some kind of theropod and a stegosaurus, and a bat. There was also a forest level called Wood Zone that seemed to have been worked on for a longer time than the Hidden Palace Zone, and a desert area called Dust Hill Zone. Dust Hill Zone seemed to be based on American deserts and was cut due to time constraints. Another zone named by fans, Rock Zone, was going to be Dust Hill Zone but at a previous point in time. There was also going to be a winter-themed zone based on Dust Hill Zone, where all the cacti were replaced with Christmas trees. 
Metropolis Zone was originally only two acts long, but it became three when another zone was reworked and merged with it. This zone was called Genocide City Zone. Level designer Tom Payne said the name was chosen by the Japanese developers, who didn't have a strong grasp on the English language. The zone was renamed to Cyber City Zone to be less offensive before being reworked and merged with the Metropolis Zone. Even entire games in the franchise have been reworked. Sonic 2 and Sonic CD were originally planned to be essentially the same game, as were Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. Sonic 2 and Sonic CD naturally grew apart and became separate games because the developers were in two different locations, but Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles became two separate games because of time constraints and manufacturing costs. Splitting the game into two parts gave the team more time to finish the second half. Sonic and the Secret Ring started out as a port of 2006's Sonic the Hedgehog, but Sega wanted to focus on a game for the Wii's launch that focused on the Wii controller's capabilities. They ultimately decided to change it into something entirely new. Today we'll be taking a look at some obscure games about that blue streak speeding by Sonic the Hedgehog. It cannot be denied that Sega had a huge impact on the gaming landscape with their spiky blue mascot. Not only was Sonic the first video game character to be featured in the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade, but it also sparked a wave of animal mascot games, some of which are actually good and not Bubsy. He also inspired and encouraged a dedicated and eccentric fandom. But while Sega is known for having a relaxed relationship with their fanbase, and there are certainly some interesting fan-made games out there worth talking about, for this video we'll be sticking only to official games. In 2001, Sega launched their Japanese exclusive Sonic Cafe phone service, offering a number of games for the iApply line of phones from NTT Docomo for a monthly subscription of 315 yen or approximately $2 at the time. While a select number of games featured on the service did make it to Europe and the US on the Sega mobile service, such as ports of classic Sonic games, many of them stayed in Japan. Some noteworthy games include Sonic Racing Shift Up, in which the player attempts to shift gears in a racing cart. The goal of the game was to get the timing on the gear changes as precise as possible, and there was a system where data could be sent and received from a remote server to compete with other players. Another title on the service was Nakayoshi Chao, or Good Friend Chao, a virtual pet game where the player raises a Chao, similar to the Chao Garden featured in a number of main console games. The player is tasked with keeping their chow happy by petting it and talking to it. The game also includes wallpapers that can be downloaded for your phone. At the time of this recording, this is the only chow specific game to be released with full colour graphics. A very simple kart racer featuring Sonic titled Sonic Racing Kart was also available on the service. The game would automatically accelerate and the player would simply steer left and right. Interestingly, only three months after release, the sequel, Sonic Racing Kart 3DX, was also published. As the title implies, 3DX features much of the same gameplay, but this time is in 3D. These two games also depict Sonic in a rather more traditional style go-kart, where in other games he's shown almost exclusively driving a racing car. Sonic Cafe also included an assortment of card and puzzle games simply featuring Sonic characters, which are too numerous to list here, but rest assured, they truly live up to exactly what you'd expect to get for just $2 a month. Interestingly, the service included a port of the classic 1984 arcade game Flicky, which many players might not realise is the origin for the birds known as Flickies in the Sonic franchise, despite being released six years before the first Sonic the Hedgehog game. Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car, or Harinozumi Sonic no Omawari-san, literally meaning Hedgehog Sonic the Police Officer, is a 1991 children's arcade game featuring Sonic as a police officer, driving a patrol car and protecting the city from Dr. Eggman. The game itself is presented inside a rideable arcade cabinet shaped like a police car, which tilts left and right during gameplay. It features a steering wheel with control movement, an indicator arm, a jump button, and a button to turn on the siren and and start the game. Despite being designed for children, the cabinet can comfortably fit two adults, presumably so that parents could easily supervise young children while playing. After an introductory speech by Sonic, the player is given free reign to control the car as it drives around the city, stopping periodically to allow groups of animals to cross the road. After a short period of time, Dr. Eggman makes an appearance, and while in other games he focuses on obtaining the Chaos Emeralds, conquering the world, or having a bean machine, in this game he commits his greatest act of evil to date, disrupting traffic. 
Once Eggman is defeated and makes his escape, Sonic returns to the police station and the player is given a rating out of 5 stars, with one gameplay session lasting around 2 minutes. Surprisingly, this is the first Sonic game to feature voice acting, with Takeshi Kusao and Masaharu Sato performing as Sonic and Dr. Eggman respectively, both of whom reprised their roles in later games. <laughs> While both a Japanese and English version of the game were made, the English version was never exported outside of Japan and may have been intended for areas in Japan with high numbers of English-speaking tourists. Moving on from police cars to spaceships, Sega Sonic Cosmo Fighter, also known as Sega Sonic Cosmo Fighter Galaxy Patrol, was developed by the same team as Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car. Unsurprisingly, it's similar to Sonic Patrol Car in many ways, being a children's arcade game in a tilting rideable cabinet. However, the actual game is far more advanced and features top-down shoot-em-up gameplay rather than the sedate driving mechanics from Patrol Car. This time, the controls include buttons for firing regular projectiles and rockets, and a speed-up lever which tilts the whole ride forward, along with a regular joystick that moves the player left to right, along with tilting the cabinet to match. And while the previous game heavily borrowed assets from existing games, Cosmo Fighter has its own unique graphics and a surprisingly good soundtrack. The game focuses on Sonic rescuing a space station full of animals from an attack by Dr. Eggman, who will throw bombs and other obstacles at Sonic to try and stop him. Once the player reaches the space station, Eggman will ram Sonic's ship, and after the player does enough damage, he'll then transform his pod into a giant green robot, with the player needing to destroy both arms and the head to finally win. The player is then rewarded with a short animation of Sonic flying past the station and thanking them for help followed again by a rating out of 5 stars. But perhaps the most unusual thing to come out of this arcade development branch of Sega is the Sega Sonic Popcorn Shop, a popcorn vending machine featuring a minigame of Sonic and Tails in a popcorn factory. After inserting their money, the customer is prompted to select one of three flavours, butter, salted or curry. After the selection is made, Tails places popcorn kernels onto a conveyor belt and Sonic turns it on. But as they begin moving along the belt, Dr. Eggman appears from off screen to reverse the direction. Sonic grabs the popcorn kettle and starts running along the conveyor belt while being chased by Dr. Eggman, now wielding a large mallet. The player is encouraged to turn a green crank on the cabinet to make Sonic run faster and escape Eggman. After reaching the end of the belt, Sonic slides down a chute and drops popcorn kernels into a burning stove, where the player is then able to turn the same green crank to help Tails cook the popcorn while Dr. Dr. Eggman tries to steal it as it pops. During this segment, the actual popcorn is being cooked inside the cabinet, and the game ends with Tails walking off screen with the cup of popcorn that is then dispensed to the player. That said, the game itself is largely irrelevant, with the popcorn being dispensed regardless of any input from the player beyond the initial flavour selection. However, it still includes full voice acting from the previously mentioned Kusao and Sato, and it even has its own error screen should it malfunction, showing Tails being chased by Eggman and Sonic telling you to call for a shopper. Assistant. While it might seem a little strange at first, popcorn is actually a very popular snack in Japan, so their choice of product isn't as random as it might seem. Similarly, the option for a curry flavour is normal in the region, and would only seem strange to a more western audience. However, in an email to the now defunct gaming site UK Resistance in 2007, one man recounted his experience with a Sega Sonic popcorn shop during a trip to Osaka, Japan. Quote, the butter popcorn tasted like sh** and made my hands really greasy, so I wouldn't recommend it. Moving away from children's games and vending machines and onto games for a more mature audience. Unveiled in 2013 at the Tokyo-based Joypolis Arcade, Sonic Athletics is a huge multiplayer arcade game, and we really do mean huge. It features individual screens and treadmills for each playable character, allowing up to eight players to race each other simultaneously. Players can choose to play as Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Shadow, Metal Sonic, Silver and Blaze, simply by using the appropriate treadmill. Surprisingly, the gameplay is not exclusively racing, and the cabinet actually has three different game modes, 100m dash, 110m hurdles and the long jump. Fortunately for players, developers mercifully included a jump button, so the player is never actually required to leave the ground. 
In 2013, the Joy Police Arcade also released Sonic Ghost Shooting, part arcade game, part ride. While very little information is actually available about this arcade attraction, what is known is that it's an interactive dark ride game which borrows elements from Pyramid Cave and Pumpkin Hill from Sonic Adventure 2, with each player using a light gun to shoot at ghosts during the ride, with six cars holding two people each, allowing up to 12 players at once. That same year, they also released Sonic Brain Ranking, running from the 24th of October 2013 to the 10th of January 2018, a Green Hill Zone themed area where players answered questions in the style of a quiz show. Each game lasted for five rounds, and players were encouraged to enter as a family or team, with the winner receiving a prize at the game's end. Along with these games, the Joy Police arcades in both Tokyo and Qingdao have also featured some unique Sonic-themed merchandise and events over the years, along with other smaller attractions. These include carnival games, UFO catchers, bumper cars, and even hot air balloon rides, with the Qingdao venue famously featuring a giant statue of the iconic character on its roof, a must-see for any die-hard Sonic or Sega fans. <laughs>